Hi, everyone. We'll be starting shortly. We're just working out some technical difficulties on our end and uh, we'll get it working in a minute. All right. Take care. Hold on. Okay. If you are tuning in, hang in there. We're just waiting for our guests to arrive. They're having a little bit of technical difficulty. Hopefully we'll work that out shortly and they will be joining the broadcast. See you in a
If you just joined us, hang in there. Our guest is having some technical difficulty joining us and they should be joining us shortly. So hang in there. Just keep it on in the background and do whatever it is you're doing. We're going to be live as soon as we can get her on. I'm working with her now. So hold on. While we're waiting for our guests to come on, I see we have some people in the audience that I recognize. I'm going to put your names up and just say hello to you back. And if you have any questions um, for our guests when she does get here, um, would you like to put them in the comments? And I'll make sure that just as I'm bringing your name up on the screen here, that I will ask your question. So feel free to think about what it is with your own children that you may have challenges with, uh, with the education system or something that you might want to share even. And I'll be sure to put it up here and let people know, um, you know, the answer. So, cause if you're going through it, you know, the likelihood someone else is, is very, very high. So feel free to put your comments down. Please also do me a favor and do this. I'm about to put this up here too. Hold on a minute. You can do this. Um, as soon as you see our guests come, share. Oh, wait, she's here. Yay. Let me sure I can hear. Hold on, guys. We're going to work this out. Ingrid, can you hear me? Okay, I can, I can, I can see you. I can't hear you. So let me, if you can hear me, hold on.
So our guest has arrived, guys. We're just working it out to make sure I, we, you can hear her because that's really important. Um, so hang in there. We're, we're, you can't hear anything? That's really strange. You, can you hear me now, Shalon? Just let me know. Give me like a thumbs up or something because I keep muting myself just so that you don't hear any background noise. But And I'm talking to the guest. So I want to make sure you can hear me, but I, Ingrid, I can't hear you. Let's see something here. All right, let's see what's going on. I'm going to add you to the broadcast and see if we can fix it. You might have to refresh. Let's see something, what happens. I'm going to add her to it. Can you hear me, Ingrid? Yes, I can. Now I can hear you. Okay, good. So it came on. Great. So are you on a laptop by chance? Yes. Okay, so tilt down so because I'm looking right up at your chin or either prop your laptop up on something like books or something. So it's at eye level and we don't cut your head off. Because right now I'm seeing, and I'm going to do this right here. Let me see. Is that better? Yes, that's better. Yeah, the higher the better usually. It's a better angle the higher your computer is. So if you want to get that straight. But I'm glad you got on so we can you know, hear you yeah. and see you now. Everything's good. As we're working this guys out, you know, Please, please share and let people know we're about to go. We're already live, but we're about to get started. I'm so glad you see it. We worked everything out, and I'll, I'll find out from you later what the issue was so we can avoid it for like future broadcasts too. Okay. All right. Well, great. All right. So let me do this. Let me um, put this earpiece. Let me do this before we start it because. Feedback and mine is really loud, so let me turn it down. Not having problems with this. All right, so let me just do this. I'm gonna turn you way down so I don't get too much feedback here. If my ear doesn't want to turn on, let's see. I'm gonna plug it in here. Hmm. Of course, everything was that wacky. Hold on, give me a second. <laughs> Everything is that wacky. Plug it in here. I think I go that way. So I hear anything. It's not turning blue, so I'm assuming that's not going to work today. But yeah, okay, here we go. All right, so let's get started. How are you today? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Are you ready? Yes. Glad to have you on. All right. So guys, we're going to start. Three, two. One. Hey there, everyone. Thank you for joining us on Back Talk, the talk show for our Black parents. Today, we have Ingrid C. Johnson, Executive Director, President, and Co-Founder of the Council of African American Parents. She is also a community leader. So welcome, Ingrid. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Okay, and um, tell, to, can, just tell the guests more about who you are and how the council got started. Okay, um, my name is Johnson, and I um, was passionate about education issues, equity issues, and I moved to the Iowa area with my children only to find out why we have the educational opportunities for the year for us to navigate. So we started being a parent, and we had to start with so our kids get cultural affirmation and academic excellence. And so we started building a 501 c organization, and we've just been building ever since. We're starting our 26th year to empowering and engaging parents and students about the importance of academic excellence and working together and collaborating. Okay. Now your your um your your audio is coming in kind of robotic and and uh pingy like it's really coming out a little weird. I'm not sure. Um, is a lot of times are you on wireless by chance? Yeah. For some reason, it's really kind of hard to hear you at this point. So what I'm we may have to do is um refresh or. And see what happens, and I'll bring it back in. So, because I cannot, we can't understand what you're saying. It's really gargled. Let's try. It. You have to refresh. I'll bring you back in. Just refresh your screen. 
Okay, see what happens. All right, we're going to come back to her. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with today with the audio. I know there's some storms in different areas, so that may be the case um, with the weather. Uh, who, who knows what's going on, but uh, we'll get this thing together and get it started. So you can get back in. Hey, Mahogany, thanks for joining. I see you just joined. I'm just waiting for our guests to come back. We are having some technical mm -hmm. difficulties this morning. I'm not sure what's happening. Oh, good. I'm glad you can hear me. All right. So let's find out. Was her um, audio gargled or was it just on my end? Because, you know, I can't tell what you guys are hearing except for what I'm hearing. So I had her go out to come back in. Hopefully she can come back in. OK. Let's see what happens. Hopefully she just refreshed the screen. That should come back. And if not. Please put your questions up here that you may have about working with children, because what Inkerit does is that they have all these wonderful programs for kids from kindergarten to teenagers. And they have one of the highest success programs out there for um, students going on to colleges of their choice. I mean, like top colleges. So, um, you know, that's our goal. We want our children to succeed and hopefully succeed even more so than we have in life. And this organization is doing that. They're taking kids that are excelling. They're not only just taking them and um, and uh, make sure they do what they need to do to graduate, but they're also showing them, you know, the pride of the African American community. They take them on field trips and things like that. So I really want you to hear what she has to say, and because that part is really important, is the sense of self identity, sense of pride. Um, you know, in unfortunately in our country, uh, we've been uh, taught to. Um, or try, they try to teach us to not really be proud. Black is bad. Black is horrible. Black is this. And, you know, those things get ingrained in our culture sometimes, even though we try to um, push back. So what is, is important for our children to know is that that's not the case. We are proud people. We've been, we came from kings and queens and we came here to this country. Unfortunately, most of us in uh, our ancestors in shackles and chains, but that, that's not who we are. That's, we're capable, we're deserving, and that we have things that are in our history that we should be proud of. And that's important to instill in young children because it helps with their self-esteem, their development of themselves, um, something they can be proud of. And you have to have to give children as much positivity in this world because there are so many people who will be negative to your children as they grow from bullies to um, systemics types of uh, racism that they'll have to encounter. So you have to give them that foundation of pride in order for them to combat what they're going to be going up against in this world. So I can't tell you how important that is. And um, Black History Month it just isn't enough. It really is not enough. We have to do all we can as parents to take them on field trips to show them the pride of African-American community, even if that's not their entire self. So say you have a mixed race child, but 50% of them is black. Well, guess what? When the society finds out that 50% of them is, is black, they're gonna to try to be negative toward them, bullies in school, whatever. And you have to give them that fortitude to be able to fight and tell them, look, you can't get to me because I'm already proud. I was already raised proud. I had my foundation built and in place and it's solid. So whatever you say to me about me being an African-American or part African-American cannot hurt me, cannot hurt me. So raising your children with that as a foundation is mega important. It really is. So hopefully we can get... Um, Ingrid back here so we can talk about what her organization has done because they've done some really amazing things. And I want her to talk about some of the students who have achieved uh, through her program. 
you know, if you can find a program like this, they are in Southern California. She's going to talk about that a little more. But if you can find a program like this in your area, you know, Google search, whatever you have to do, do it. What we're hoping to do in the future is to have um, ambassador type groups around the country for successful black parenting so that we can um, do some of these types of things uh, where um, not as much as they're doing because they're doing some incredible things, but just little things like parent education. And uh, we're hoping to do things like book swaps and clothes, clothing swaps and anything we can do to help your child to be more successful at school. And the more the better. We need a, an army out there of people helping each other because God knows you can't get anywhere in this world without help. I, mean, I don't care what people say. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Well, somebody had to help you get those boots or open the door so you can get those boots. Um, so we're here to make sure that we open some doors. We provide you with the boots if you need some boots to pull up. But that's what we're doing. Let me see how they're doing. I thought they were going to come right back. Let's see. Should I kept her? I guess why she was here. Let's hang in there. Hold on. Let me see what's going on. They were in and I'm not sure. Maybe they can't get back in now. Let me call and find out what's happening. I'm going to text actually. Can you get back in? Oh, that should have been a question mark. <laughs> Let me see. Can you get back in? You guys get to see the behind the scenes right now. Hopefully this is rare. I love this platform. Hey, Christian. I see you. Thank you so much. Christian says, amen. U.S. public schools hardly cover black history. You're absolutely right. Or highlight the accomplishments that black and brown people have contributed to this country and to our life. It is our responsibility to educate our children they need to know they come from greatness and are capable of doing great things and they have it in their blood, uplift, educate, and empower our children. I'm going to put that right up there because that's pretty awesome. Thank you, Kristen. That is pretty awesome. And um, I'm one to advocate that teachers also need to have in services during all of Black History Month about how to teach Black history. Um, because as you know, from some of the uh, articles that have been in the newspapers, if you've been following it, they've been doing some really inappropriate types of teaching about slavery, making black children in the classroom slaves. Uh, one teacher even stepped on the child's back and said, this is how it would feel to be a slave. Um, we had recently, as of last week, a teacher with that had the kids make blackface and put them on popsicle sticks and during a performance held them up. So a lot of teachers out here have no idea how to teach black history or what the context is that they're teaching or why it might be even inappropriate. Uh, so they, there's definitely some um, training needed on that side of education. And, uh, you know, um, hopefully we can start advocating as well as the magazine, because we're more than just a magazine or online site. What we do is we advocate um, for black families. So this is one thing that's on my list is to teach public school teachers and even in private school, if they want about how to teach black children. Okay. They're calling me. I'm going to mute for a second. I'm going to mute the, the sound. Hold on a minute.
All right, uh, guys, everybody's watching. We're getting this taken care of. We're just going to have her change devices and she's having problems with that device. And uh, we should be back shortly. Just take a short break. Hang in there. We're here. We're just working out technical issues. It's one of those days, guys. It happens, you know, but the show must go on. So we're going to keep the show going. So hang in there. I'm just going to mute my audio. Hey, Samantha, I see you. I'm going to put some of these comments up here because um, I, I see LaMonica. Thank you, LaMonica, too, for joining. Um, LaMonica said, the problem is that the majority of teachers are white women, and that's statistically true. Um, they have zero understanding of black history outside of the lies they have been taught, and that is absolutely true. And it's why I'm advocating that teachers uh, get that in-service training. If they don't get it regularly around the year, they should definitely get it during Black History Month and not just a one-time thing. It should be throughout the month. Um, it's pretty embarrassing what I've seen teachers do um, over these past years to try to teach Black history. And, and they have no concept. And they also think that our history starts at slavery. And we all know that's not the case. But uh, we do have some teaching to do. And that I, I totally blame um, school system for not teaching black history. You know, they, it's, it's rare to find it. And when you do find it, um, it's usually in the upper grades and uh, or higher education. And um, they have no idea, like all the accomplishments that uh, African-Americans have made to and for this country. So I'm going to leave that one up there for a second. And I'm going to mute my audio again while I help uh, this team get their uh, app together. Hold on. Guys, just hang in there. You'll hear me when we get started. We'll be right back.
All right, so this is what we're going to do since she's having um, such technical difficulties. We are going to um, have her call in while someone else is helping to get her visuals to come in. So we're gonna have her call in and I'm just gonna have her come right through my phone and she's calling now and we're gonna talk that way. So hold on. Hi, Ingrid. Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna put you on speaker so that when I'm gonna turn it all the way up, make sure everybody can hear you. And what we're going to do, because the show must go on, we're going to just have you answer the questions straight from um, the my phone until they uh, get you up and running there. So just tell our guests again about you and how the council got started, because I don't think they heard you the first time. So let's do that. Good morning and thank you for having us. I'm Ingrid Johnson. I'm the co-founder of the Council of African-American Parents. We're entering our 26th year as a nonprofit, community-driven organization, and we work to empower, engage families about the importance of academic excellence, cultural affirmation, and collaboration. Um, we started in the Diamond Bar Walnut area of Southern California, and we branched out throughout Southern California, and we also have um, affiliates that we work with um, throughout the U.S., and we're just interested in promoting um, American brilliance and excellence and just empowering our children to know what their legacy has been and what the expectations are. Okay. Well, I wanted to bring that up on the screen so people could see, they can see your website right now. So I, I put that up there. Um, now, can you tell us about what age groups you serve and how the council helps black parents and children? Um, I'm so excited to answer that question because this is the first year that we started our reading circle and that's for students um, grades K through third and we're teaching them how to work in groups, um, analyze books, pick out the main story because we find that so often the foundational um, skills that our kids need to um, work in groups and just be able to analyze information starts that early. So we have that K through um, third grade, and we, we take kids really from birth until for life. Once you become a CAP scholar, a CAP family, you're in for life. And we promote our kids when they're at the elementary age, middle school, high school, um, undergraduate, graduate, and on to careers. And um, we have now some scholars who started in the program themselves. They since started their own families and now we have their children. So we're starting like a second generation of scholars that we are helping to um, empower and engage. Okay. Can you tell us about some of the programs that you guys have established there? Uh, I saw some great things that uh, children can participate in, teens as well. So can you tell us about some of your like... Uh, our, um, so one of our um, our signature program is our junior senior workshop that we work with students in the 11th and 12th grade to actually prepare them for the pipeline and the competition for admissions to uh, colleges and universities throughout the country. And we start in August, and it's a 16-week extensive program where we help students with their essays, their college searches, um, financial aid, scholarship. We help them become prudent consumers of higher education. Our other program that's very signature is our male program um, for African-American males, our mathematics program, our legacy program. And what we do with that program is take students from seventh grade on to um, learn math, um, math skills. They get tutoring on a weekly basis at one of our collegiate partners, the University of California, Riverside. And they meet every Saturday from nine to 12 with tutors that look like them on skills to develop their math skills. Once they've completed that program, they go on to the community college during the summer or they take online classes to um, either remediate or accelerate in mathematics. And as they treat for those who get a B or better, they um, stay at the University of California, Irvine for four days free of cost and get a whole STEM um information about STEM and we know that math is the gateway to so many other opportunities and that's why we really focus on the math 
We have a PALS program, which stands for Personal Academic Learning System, which um, works with students from fourth grade through 12th to do, learn how to work in groups, how to do research, go on college tours, um, all those things, speak in public, develop community service projects, and so forth. And we work with them twice a month at Cal State Fullerton. And so we utilize the resources and collaborate, leverage our resources with our collegiate partners because it is that something powerful about having students be on a college campus so they can see that that's something that is attainable and something that we very much expect. Okay. Now, now uh, you also have, I thought I saw something about STEM program as well. The, our STEM program is our mathematical program for boys. And we take kids, you know, STEM is the future. So all our programs do have a STEM strand in them because we are um, talking to our kids about math, how we were the first, we developed the first mathematical system. So they know their culture, they know their history. So they know that that's something that we developed as a people. So they are very much gravitating toward the math. But we also develop stock science and we want to have them be inventors and just have um, impossible, you know, unlimited possibilities in their mind and creativity of where they can go. So we are definitely promoting STEM careers, STEM majors, STEM exposure. Okay. Okay. Now, what about anything for girls? I, I hear the STEM for the boys, but you know, the big movement now seems to be like getting all the girls involved. Uh, right. We have a partner with the STEM Academy at UCR and our girls are involved in that. They're also involved, involved in the coding um, programs that we have. And so the reason we focus on the boys with the math program is because when we did a study 10 years ago, there were only eight African-Americans in the whole region who made it to calculus, which is a game changer in the college admissions piece. So we are working with all of our students to um, empower them and make them very acceptable um, in multi-subjects about what they need to do. We want to see success earlier with our children and um, motivate them to be excellent. So all of our students are exposed to STEM in some kind of way because that's who we are as a people. Okay. So uh, what is your success rate with creating successful Black children? Our success rate is very impactful, powerful. Um, We have like a 99% Um, four-year college going rate most of our students they see um, you know the confidence level is there and that's the biggest part of it the confidence letter because we see genius in our children all the time but they don't really get that take they don't really get that sometime in the day-to-day school day so when they come to us they know their history they know their greatness and they know the expectation and those three things make for successful children Right. Now, we were just talking about that a little bit before you came on. Now, well, how, please tell the audience how important it is to know about our history for our children. And then why, why does it's that make key. a difference? It's mm-hmm. key. If you know where your people have come from, you know where you can go and what your um your what you can do as a per, as a people. Um, I think that a lot of times in schools, um, the history, our struggles, our challenges, our successes are not put on the radar. And so a lot of times our kids are seeing everybody else's successes and challenges and greatness, and they're not seeing their own. They don't see themselves in those, um, those narratives that are, that you see it in school. So we give them the narrative because we really feel that it is very important that our kids, you know, they know that we built the pyramids, you know, they know that we, um, built the rotunda in, the, in Washington, D.C. They, you know, they know, you know, George, about George Washington Carver. They, they know all the greatness of people in history. And they know that those who come before them, they stand on their shoulders. And the, it, the expectation is very great in our organization for them to exceed those 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 accomplishments of our people. Yes. And it's absolutely I agree with you. Absolutely key that um, our children know where they came from and so that we can give them as much of a strong foundation to fight systemic racism and to know that what people say about you is not true. Now, one of the um, the audience members said 
The issues is uh, that higher education or higher ups or higher ups don't care about highlighting black and brown people in a positive light. It's a form of control for years. Black and brown people were just um, picked it as less. They that's what they want us to be and believe if they show that we are uh, descended from kings and queens and greatness. They'll know we'll rise. We won't accept the nonsense that's been given to us. So I, I, I do agree with that, um, you know, to a full st extent, like uh, some, you know, there's systemic racism that is put in place to keep our children from rising. But your students, some of them have gone on to Ivy League schools as well, right? Correct. We have students who have um, graduated from Princeton, from Harvard, from Columbia, you know, Georgetown, all the schools on the East Coast, we've had students go attend there and have risen and have done really well um, in those schools. But we've also had students that have gone to HBCUs and have been very successful. We have kids that have gone to UC's public education who've done well. And it's not so much the institution, it's making sure that they are confident within themselves and have a strong foundation. Because when our kids leave our program, they know who they are, they know what is expected, and they know our greatness. And when you know you're great and it has been done before, all the lies that in, in other people tell you, they just, it doesn't have any significance in your life. Right. And now how do you guys go about educating the, the children, the students on uh, their greatness and where they came from? What kind of things do you do there? Um, one thing we do, we um, have them study the continent of Africa. They have to know all the different countries in Africa. Um, they work in groups. They learn that working by yourself is not as powerful as working in groups. They work in teams. Um, we have the village concept for our PALS program where the older students um, team up with the younger students, serve as mentors, and working together to, to um, develop um programs we do speech contests where they you know the black history bowl they're um participating in the black history bowl where we have um championship winning teams each year in the region that it's a regional competition um we just prepare our kids every day you know day to day we have them see other professionals who may be a math teacher or may be the university president they have greatness in their midst all the time We've had university presidents, other, you know, administrators come and speak to our kids about the importance of success, excellence, succeeding, and telling their life story about where they were and what some of their st struggles and challenges were. They see greatness day on a day-to-day -day basis. It's not like an anomaly. It's every day they are impacted with these people that have successful lives, that have families, that work every day that deal with community issues and get involved. It's all about, you know, bringing the elevator down for someone else so that they can be successful, you know, as well. And, you know, our college and universities, they recruit our students because they, they know that our, you know, CAP scholars are going to be prepared, that they're going to graduate, that they have a, a system of support. We don't just get rid of our kids when they graduate from high school, we stick with them and we stand by them and we expect them to come back and talk to our younger students about what their collegiate experiences are, what their career experience has been. And it has been a great model for us. Oh, that's fantastic. I thought I saw something on there too on your website about field trips. Uh, you A field trip that some of the kids took or? Yeah. Uh-oh. Hold on, we got some. Uh, in Wait, hold on, we got some interference. Let's see what happens. Signal's going way back, I guess. Try again, let's see. You there? Yes, I am. Okay, it's better now, go ahead. One of our cultural tours, Black Tour LA, where um, Dr. Tony Humber, who is a professor emeritus from Cal Poly Pomona, she takes our kids all through um, Los Angeles. They talk about Biddy Mason, you know, they go to the firefighters, um, pavilion. They go to the Watts Tower. They get to know their culture and their history and the origins of African Americans in California. 
and the world. And so that's one of our cultural tours that we take. We also go to colleges and universities all the time, and we get the whole total experience for our students so that they know how to seek out resources. They know when they get to campus to go to the career planning and placement center and get a forecast of what jobs are going to be relevant five years from when they enter so that they know that they're not studying something in vain, that they're studying something that's going to be relevant when they graduate. Way. Right. And I saw that the parents go with the students to these uh, yes. college and campuses. Involvement is, a, is, a, is a must. We feel that, you know, preparing our kids for greatness and a total parents that involved, you know, have their and the enterprise for our kids are just great. Okay, we may have to have you say that again. It was breaking up again at that point. Sorry, go. Can you say that one like part again? Because that's so important about parent involvement. Um, parent and I- involvement and, and community engagement are key ex- expectations of our organization. It's the core of our expectation. That's why we're called the Council of African American Parents because unless community and parents are actively engaged and involved, our kids will not understand our struggles. They won't understand our expectation for them to be successful. We um, take it very seriously to have parents go on all of our trips and be engaged and be present and not just drop your kids off, Mm -hmm. but to be actively engaged in the parenting and the raising of our children, not just your children, but you know, the whole community. Right. Right. Okay. So, I mean, I agree with that being that we're a successful black parenting magazine and it's the sole reason we exist. We feel that, you know, parents are a key, um, not the teachers that are raising the children eight hours a day, but parents, you have to partner with the teachers um, to make sure that your child achieves because some of these teachers just are not here for our kids. They just aren't. And we've had things in the news. Um, Let me show you what one of our audience members said. They said the problem is that the majority of teachers are white women. They have zero understanding of black history outside of the lie, the lies they've been taught. Um, what do you what do you say about about that? Because it, the statistics show that that statement is true. They are uh, mostly white women. I know they're trying to recruit more teachers of color. How does that impact our children? I agree with that 100 percent. And that's why I tell parents when they come to our first orientation, you are your child's first teacher. You teach your child, send them to school for confirmation of what you've taught them. Mm -hmm. We have to start being active and present in teaching our children. You know, and cultural awareness and information and affirmation starts at home. Absolutely. It really does. It really does. You cannot depend on uh, others to to raise your children um, if you want them to be successful. You know, um, as a teacher, I've had um, uh, parents tell me it was my problem, not their problem. When I called about their child's behavior or something like that, that they were doing. And I just, you know, when it happens, I'm like, okay, now I know why I'm having problematic. Really obvious to me at that point when I'm dealing with um, parents who don't take responsibility for their children. So it's really important that we do so, that we do so. Um, if guys, if you have qu- uh, questions, please, please put them in the comments. I would love to um, have Ingrid uh, answer some of your questions as well. So I just wanna give you that. Um, if you can also, I'm putting up share now, so make sure that you share the broadcast. We want to make Back Talk as popular as possible. I know we have a few bugs that work. we're working out with the system, sometimes with um, con- connectivity here, but I need you guys to make sure you help to make this show as popular as possible. So Ingrid, tell me a little bit more, I'm gonna put your picture up too, so people will see who we're talking to, um, about your organization. If you can tell me a little bit about your organization, like how, is this a big organization? Um, how do you do all of these initiatives? We're a community-based organization, and we are not a huge organization, but we're a powerful and determined organization. Mm -hmm. And we, like I said, we've been in business for 26 years. We started with um, less than 10 families who signed on with us, 
and we've had to have expanded over we have hundreds of families involved from all over the region now who some families drive over 100 miles to be engaged in our programs on a, on a weekly basis so we're the Council of African American Parents. Our our primary um, focus is education and cultural affirmation for our students and our parents as well, because we do parent workshops for our parents. And our organization is a three pronged um, attack. We have academic excellence, social engagement, and cultural enrichment. And we 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 um, we use that over and over again so that our kids know. It's not just about academics. It's not just about this. It's all, you know, we need the total three-pronged approach to be successful. And parents are very much key into it. Um, you know, we encounter a variety of issues that our, our kids are confronted with. Um, you know, racism. We have kids that are coming from single parents, foster homes, just, you know, dysfunctional families. But we feel like we have enough parents who are capable of bringing those kids along well as well, because we don't want to leave anybody behind. And um, we want to make sure that this village approach is something that catches on all through the nation, because we can no longer just be in silos and care about our kids. We need to be concerned about all of our children and all of them being successful and all of them getting the resources and the support that they need to be successful. And we're very much into, you know, equity issues and making sure that our schools that our kids attend are, are giving them that, those things that they need to be successful. Because you see so many um, kids fall through the cracks. Well, they fall, they're falling through the cracks be, a lot of times because no one is really paying attention to what their needs are. And it's not a one size fits all thing when it comes to educating and parenting a child. You can have three children from the same family. They all have different needs and we need people to be able to understand they're all three different individuals and they need to be um, treated as such. And therefore their needs are different and every and the way you work with them are different. So we um, definitely try to get a lot of bang for our buck by collaborating with our um, community partners, our collegiate partners and our corporate partners. We have some great corporate partners, um, Southern California Edison, Southern California Gas Company, Union Bank, U.S. Bank. You know, these people are working with us to help make sure that some of our programs and our initiatives are, are really powerful. Um, we have the Office of the President from the University of California. And, you know, a lot of um, colleges, we meet on their campuses so that our kids get to see, you know, the university. And they get to meet sometimes the president. Um, Cal Poly Pomona has an African-American woman president. And they, they've met her several times. And when we go on campus there for visits, she's always available for our kids and our parents. Well, that's great that you have that kind of community support. Now, let me ask you, have you gotten any uh, um, uh, pushback or discrimination or challenges that you've had to fight for our children? Oh, all the time. It's a fight every day. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we've gotten pretty good at it over the years. And so, you know, we are very much advocating for our kids every day so that they can get in the AP calculus class so that they can have a college prep course that they're not just taking cash sharing you know some some schools want to put our kids in cash sharing when you know being a cashier is not going to be relevant five years from now because if you've gone into any of the like apple stores you know everything is a cashless thing where they're not even using live people to do those things so we're trying to promote our kids to be in a rigorous college preparatory program so that they are getting a variety of skills and exposure so they can make the best decision for them for their skill set right right so let me ask you um I, I i'm so excited about all of the things that you're doing in southern california do you have any future plans to go national with the council um yes that's one of our plans but again, you know, we're limited in terms of resources and um, opportunity to do this. Uh, we have no problem in um, working with other community based groups in other states and other countries to um, give them our best practices of some of the things we've gone through to help them get to the next level. Uh, we also, you know, pr are promoting our kids to be entrepreneurs 
and we discuss, you know, black representation in distribution at the me- mega mergers and on Wall Street, mass manufacturing and all those type of things. And we just, um, you know, had a lot of kids um, interested in transportation, the transportation industry. And so we're going to be working with Metro to make sure that our kids get internships and um, those kind of exposures so that they can look at, you know, careers that may not be the, you know, the doctor, lawyer, engineer, but they can be in fields that are really going to be about being change agents and making a better place for people in our community. Wow, that's great. I love the entrepreneurship component, mm-hmm. you know, being that a businesswoman myself. So, you no, know, that that's really important. But I would I would love to see this spread all across the country. Uh, we need as many initiatives as possible. Now, let me ask you, what are you most excited about coming up? What, what is, is the thing that um, you're really looking forward to? I'm most excited about our reading circle. It's just so exciting for me when I see those little kids at kindergarten, just so excited about learning. I said, geez, if we could put this in a bottle and keep this with them all through their life, we, we've won the battle because they're so excited they come prepared, they bring their books, they're sharing, they're talking about careers, they're picking stories out of the book, and people have donated tons of books to this program. We have um, families, we have parents whose kids have graduated who come back to help with this program because they're so excited about it. Um, you know, it's, it's about activating their imaginations early and letting them know that they serve they, we're serving them so they can be successful in multiple subjects. So we're planting the seeds early so that we have a harvest. We want to have a harvest amongst our kids. No, that's that's perfect. That's absolutely great. We get um, the question often from parents, especially parents of uh, boys, how to increase their reading levels. So that program that you're doing um, is one way that can happen. Do you have any advice for parents about that? Make it exciting. Keep it relevant. You know, you you bring stories to them that they can act out or that they can share with other students about the story, the main characters. Um, you know, we try to have them read, you know, Native Son and just historical kind of books and learn about different people in history. And um, it has been something very powerful because the, the boys have done well. Um, in terms of making sure that when they are together, they feel powerful because they're working together and other people, they, other scholars are going along with alongside them. Right, right. So that, I love that. And so kind of I would like, what does that program look like? So they come to the program and they bring you said they bring their own books or what do they bring for the reading program? Yes. The students, we have books that have been donated. And they bring a book that they might be excited about. They're able to share the book. We also do like vision boards. These these young kids have all done vision boards. All of our programs, the kids do vision boards at the beginning of the year. We have vision boards. We even have parents doing vision boards because we need to start making sure that they have goals and objectives. And they, you know, we let them do it in any kind of way they want. They can do it on a board or they can do it electronically, but they have to start formulating thoughts about where they want to be, what they want to do, what they think they want to do. So I think that for the reading circle, they bring books, people donate books, they get to choose books. We read a book as a, they read a book as a group for the week. And then they talk about that book and then they go back and they bring, but everybody suggests a book that they want to focus for that month. And, you know, like for March, we focused on um, Women History Month. Um, the book that they focused on was like Rosa Parks. Uh, who is Rosa Parks? Being able to know who she is. And for a, a kindergartner to know who Rosa Parks is and really what she did and how she started a movement, it's very in, it's very incredible to see them be able to talk about Rosa Parks. I, I love it. Now, you were telling me that kindergartners are making vision boards. Yes. That's fantastic. <laughs> I would love to see these vision boards. They have to be like oh, uh, they're one, they're things. they're absolutely wonderful. Wow, wow. So tell us, how do parents get involved? Unfortunately, they can only get involved right now if they're in Southern California. Yeah, 
Right. Okay. I, I invite parents to start their own initiative, it's just mm-hmm. like I, you know, we did when we started our organization. You just collaborate. It doesn't take a lot of people. It doesn't mm-hmm. take a lot of resources. Just get people who are passionate and interested in about bringing about a change. And instead of complaining about conditions, start being more positive about it and thinking about where we want to be and visualizing where we could be. And just think about all the genius that we have in our country and amongst our people that have come before us and say, why not? Why not? Why can't we do that? Right. Be the change you want to see. So that exactly. I, I'm, I'm totally working on that myself. So absolutely. So we've come to the actually over time, but we're, we come to the end of our time for our show. Um, I do want you to hold on after, uh, but uh, I'm going to put the website up here for the council of African-American parents dot org. And you can go there and see some of their initiatives. If you know anyone in California, if you're in California, uh, Southern California, you can also um, contact them directly through their website, find out what programs they have. Please spread the word about um, the program because it is excellent and we really need this. You know, if you go into the schools, you'll see that our, our students are the ones that are, are often left behind. Um, part of it is because they, they are going by test scores, um, you know, standardized test scores. And, and, you know, not everyone does well with standardized testing and standardized isn't always standard. So I think these types of initiatives are so important to start, to push, to share. Make sure you do that. So, Ingrid, I want to thank you for coming on Back Talk, the talk show for Black parents. Uh, I really appreciate you being here. I appreciate you um, inviting us. And I apologize for the connectivity issues. And, I'm, you know, we, be love, we look forward to coming back and sharing um, any time that we can. And um, we do have a program coming up that is our annual end of the year program. Okay. Hold on. I think you're cycling again with your uh, with your uh, cell single, uh, oh, signal. It's so. called- Hold on a minute. Go ahead. Okay. It's called Rising with Resilience, and it's Sunday, June 3rd at Cal State University Fullerton from 11 to 2. And if you go to our website, you can get information on how you can purchase tickets and attend. It's the end of the year um, kind of celebration for our kids from birth through work. And we um, this year we're going to even be um, recognizing one of our parents who went back to school and became um, a doctor. So um, she was so motivated by the program. She's had three, four of her kids go through the program. She said she wanted to go back to school, and she did. And she's um, getting her doctor of chiropractic um, practice soon. So she's going to be one of our um, honorees this year. Oh, fantastic. I saw that you have all those uh, awards and things like that. So it's Uh really great to recognize people uh, for their greatness. So they get kudos on that. Very, very good program. Um, if you're watching, I want to tell the audience to be sure to follow us on social media. Uh, we are at Black Parents, sorry, Black Parenting One. Let's get that straight. Black Parenting One on most of the social media platforms out there. Uh, we were the first Black Parenting magazine in the nation as a print publication. You can also find us on Twitter at Black Parenting One, Instagram, and Facebook. So uh, until next time. We'll see you soon. And thank you guys for joining us and for your questions and comments. Uh, It's always appreciated. You guys enjoy your weekend. Have a great day.